evening, and what the fuck is happening in China with mass protests rising up against the Communist Party? And why haven't we at the media been covering it? Well, we'll tell you our perfectly good explanation for why we've been silent about what's going on. But first, let's start with what's happening with Justin Trudeau's favorite regime to be sodomized by, the Chinese Communist Party. They've enforced three years of perfectly reasonable lockdowns to simply help slow the spread. Those lockdown measures include welding people's doors shut to keep them safely locked inside, and sending people to these luxurious concentration camps. The Chinese Communist Party has also enacted additional medical measures, such as mercilessly beating innocent people for leaving their homes and spraying them with mysterious chemicals, all of which are perfectly reasonable medical procedures based on science. As we know, violence is an effective way to beat the virus right out of a person. And the best part of all this is, there's been no end in sight to the Chinese Communist Party's rather aggressive lockdowns because you don't have to keep inconveniently moving the goalposts if you just eliminate the goalposts. Right, Fauci? Yeah, China's been doing it right, haven't they? However, for some reason, the people of China are erroneously starting to think that the lockdowns aren't about a virus. That wrong think, combined with being tired of being protected with violence and being locked in their homes and prisons, was combined with outrage recently when an apartment complex caught on fire and 10 people died because they were locked inside. Which the communist authorities are denying, because after all, being burned to death is a very effective measure to prevent dying from COVID. But that was the straw that broke the mass formation psychosis's back and the citizens started rising up in mass protests in what's been the biggest display of civil disobedience since Xi Jinping took over China. And now across China, we're seeing citizens tearing down <coughs> testing centers, tearing down barricades and chanting, give me liberty or give me death in some kind of foreign dialect. No word yet on what that language is. But we can say it is easier to understand than whatever people from Louisiana speak. And notably, many of the protesters are holding up blank sheets of white paper in what have now been named the white paper protests. Why the white paper? Aside from the fact that 99% of paper is white, any words or phrases of criticism against the Chinese Communist Party have been banned. Because obviously, such words would be misinformation. This just in! Liberals, take note of where banning speech takes you. Right to destination communism. Which is exactly where we want to go. Nonetheless, holding up blank sheets of white paper with no words on them is a way the citizens are expressing their anger at the Chinese Communist Party without using words. And many citizens are calling for the head dictator of the Communist Party, Xi Jinping, to step down due to the suffering and deaths that he has inflicted on the citizens. And here's a fun fact for you. The consequences of protesting against a brutal communist dictatorship happen to be a little bit different than dyeing your hair blue, combing your non-binary armpit hair, and then going off to burn businesses down in Portland in order to protest against democracy. In China, protesting against a murderous dictatorship that doesn't care about you for your protection means that you risk imprisonment or even death. So if you didn't know any better, you might think that things are pretty bad for the citizens to be risking so much. But we don't want you to know any better, which brings us to our next point. Why, with a significant human rights movement happening in China right now, have we at the mainstream media been relatively silent about it all? Well, it's not what you think. It's just that we don't want you to know about it. That's all. But why not? For more on that, let's throw it over to our very unelected leader of the free world, Klaus Schwab. I... Uh, respect uh, China's achievements, which are tremendous over the last uh, over 40 years. I think it's um, 
a role model for many countries. That's right. According to Professor Droopyface, Communist China is a role model for the rest of the world during this time of global transformation that nobody agreed to. Schwab is reptilian enough to know that communism has never worked, still isn't, but will work if we just keep doing more of it, including in the US, Canada, and Australia. With many Chinese citizens now willing to risk death rather than continuing to live in the brutal conditions of communism that Schwab wants to bring to the rest of the world, we at the media are here to assist Klaus's great communist reset. So we felt it's better that we hide the realities of his vision by withholding the Chinese uprising from you while we spoon feed you the imagination of his vision, which delivers the WEF's recommended daily allowance of compliance. And you can also look forward to us not telling you anything about the millions of people in Brazil who have been protesting for weeks. Nor do you need to know anything about the 15,000 protesters in Iran, standing for human rights, that are now set to be executed in a mass genocide. Instead, just look at this beautiful picture again. Global transformation. It'll bring more happiness to the world. Right, Klaus? So, um, we have to prepare for a more angry world. Can't wait. And we're not going to let anything get in the way of our global transformation, especially people. That's it for tonight's special report on the uprising in China that we don't want you to know about. And if you've ever wondered why Americans are being taught to hate their country but love their administration, you probably don't have to wonder anymore. Enjoy the ride. It'll continue if you allow it. Good night. It's me.